influence of these designs is of course the arts and crafts and it's a time when there were professional embroiderers like Arthur Lee and Son and all sorts of studios where you could ask for a piece to be stitched and made into a fire screen or bed hangings or anything else just as you were in the 17th and 18th centuries but it's also the rise of the um, amateur embroiderer who stitched for pleasure and so the stitches that are used are really um, just the joy I think in these pieces so uh, rather than being paid to stitch and finish in a piece as in piecework so you're paid for each piece you did you can linger on these pieces and just loiter <laughs> around on the on the actual piece and make choices so for example on the froggy here on his um, trunk on the tree trunk you can see that there's a base coat of three different greens but i've used lots of single threads so when i'm ending off using the single thread on a um, on a leaf nearby for example you can see that i've used a single thread in the yellows from that yellow leaf across to the trunk so that's an addition so you can go back into the work you've already done and um, that rather artistic side i think it carries right through from painting into needlework So I've seen quite a lot of arts and crafts, cool work and silk work in my travels and quite a lot in museums and private houses from castles that are open to the public such as Calder Castle, Barnes Castle, Blair Castle. Many have examples of May Morris's work, some have examples of Phoebe Anne Chaquere's work and these are all um, huge personalities with enormous talent who added so much in the way that they brought textiles into the main field of the arts. A lot of um, Phoebe Anna Traquair's work is on display in the National Museums of Scotland uh, Museum in Edinburgh and that's normally open to the public and it's free and it's fantastic because you see her artwork across many different mediums, so a painted piano, um, a, a beautifully stitched embroidery, stained glass work and enamelling that she was so famous for. The other place to look for arts and crafts needlework is of course in auction houses. So if you search through the history of an auction house you'll see pieces just put in certain search words like arts and crafts needlework or embroidery by Ruby Anna Traquair or May Morris and um, of course you'll see examples. One of my favourite auction houses is Lyon and Turnbull in Scotland. Another one is Bonhams, they also have a very good textile department. But there are many others and you can look on saleroom.com and Google that. Our own collection actually has um, good examples that I've been collecting over the years. And I've bought one piece even as cheaply as £40 for a, a piano cover, but I think it would go for a lot more now. And this particular Aesop's Fable design has uh, stitches I learned when I bought that piece about 25 years ago and one of them is long and short buttonhole stitch or blanket etching or however you like to describe it and I've worked out a way of starting that stitch when you're working around an oak leaf that's made it an absolute pleasure to work and I just think that the professional and amateur embroiderers of the past will have worked out all these ways of making the stitches more enjoyable and quicker and easier and I'm really hoping that when I share that with you um, you'll enjoy the same pleasure I have when I make my pieces. <laughs>